Welcome to Rabu Tai. We're here on this wonderful Thursday morning. We are today uh, studying. We are studying by Azat Hashem, the Benish High. And we're going to do this in Russian. Okay? Like this. Asur Leshev Betoch Arba Amot Shel Mitpalel. Zaprishino Sidet Tichenia Chitiri Amot. Amai the Gdeta Dva Fita. Значит, около 8 фитов вокруг человека, который молится Амида, закон говорит, что запрещено сидеть возле него. Whether it is in front of him, whether it is behind him, you're not allowed to sit down next to a person who's praying Амида. Okay? Человек молится Амида, вы в течение его 6-7-8 фитов, вы не имеете права там сидеть. А стоять можно? не проблема стоять. Теперь, если я сам молюсь, if I'm myself in the middle of Tefillah, Zakon Gavarish, I can stay there, sit there. I, for example, say, Okay? And so on, Zakon Gavarish, I can stay there, sit there. And he can pray with me, without problem. But if I'm just sitting, I'm learning Torah, or I'm not praying, I'm doing something else, Allah says, you're not allowed to sit next to somebody who's praying. Why? Why can't I sit there when you pray? Мудрецы говорят, когда вы молитесь, вокруг вас четыре амод спускается аура божная, divine light, свет божий. Хашраата шахина. Из-за этого я не могу сесть там, это получается неуважение к вашей молитве. Из-за этого я должен встать. Но если я сам involved in тефила, Анаха would say, you don't have to get up. А если я уже сидел, я сижу и пришел шалом молиться Амида. Закон говорит, это если в синагоге, я должен встать. Почему? В синагоге люди молятся. И я должен привстать, чтобы дать ему возможность помолиться. А если я сижу здесь, в этой комнате, и приходит Рафи и начинает молиться Амида. Кен? In the room. I don't have to get up over there. Why? <coughs> Because this is not a place of Tfila. Therefore, I would not have to get up. Tov. Лалаха зайн шалом. Read. Асур. Таавур. כן, בתוך ארבעה אמות שלפני המתפלל, של הרקע תורי מוליצה, מנימי פרעה פרחזית של זניבו, שתירי אמות. זנשת, שי סם ווסים פיטף פירד נים, ינימי פרעה פרעצי, ועברים ככון מוליצה, עמידה. אבל לאחורה ולצדדיו מותר. את התולקוף פרד יאני מגו פרחזית, אף זה זניבו ימגו פרעצי. וזה היית בסביבות נהיה, כתות הדושם בו ויצי, עוד פרשו, פתרוי איל, יתו דווישו. שימו, Потому что в первый айл был мужчина, который молился. And therefore, you're not allowed to walk in front of somebody who's mit palel. You gotta walk behind him. Who? Let's say he's saying Amidah. In front of you. Behind you. And you're sitting right in front of him. Okay. Is that okay or no? No. You're not supposed to sit in front of somebody or next to somebody. That's what we have downstairs. That's all? Can I do it? Not like this. Okay. Zohar HaKadosh Pishit. Не только четыре амод. Зора Кадош пишет, мело энав. Мело энав means even if I'm here and Mr. Dave's over there, he's not allowed to walk in front of me while I'm praying Amidah. According to Zohar, all the way in front, all the way I could see you, you're not allowed to walk in front. We hold for now the Shulchan Aruch, that eight feet, you're not allowed to walk in front of a person. More than that, you can walk in front of him, no problem. That's only in front of him. Tov. Now, where are you, Shalom? Okay, next, Chet. מי שהשלים תפילתו, שלמק ושזה כהן של מליטבו. ואדם אחר עודנו מתפלל לאחוריו, בתוך ארבעה מותיו. And there is another guy behind him who still praying. I finished Amida. I want to take three steps back. Raf is behind me. He's busy as a sidur arashash. He's busy having kabanot. He's busy with his meditations and I don't know what. And I want to take three steps back. So Salakha, you cannot take three steps back. But the Chazan is doing repetition. No problem. Answer, Amen. No problem. You say, and you wait. You can say, you can say repetition to take three steps back, Asur. You cannot really take three steps back when somebody is still praying behind you. Not allowed to do it. Ken. Now, Ken. Because if you take three steps back, it's like you're walking in front of somebody who's praying. Imagine Rafi's praying. He already said Atahu Antaru. He already said Yale Yabu. Modima Nahdulah. Sim Shalom Tova Braha. And now Shalom came. Three steps back, three steps forward. Hashem Sefatai Tifta. Now say, why do you do this to me? I'm about to finish. I cannot finish now. 
I cannot complete my Amidah. I have to wait another four and a half minutes for Shalom to finish this Amidah. Halakha says, Toya, Tikkun. What's the Tikkun? You're not allowed to walk in front of somebody who's mitpalim. Now, when you pray, your feet have to be side to side, like this. Can your feet have to be like this? However, some people in their older age, it's hard to balance. Even me, I'm a younger guy. Sometimes it's hard to balance. Sometimes I need to like hold on. Yeah? Uh, you know what I mean? So a person who's having a hard time balancing, if he's not able to have his legs like this straight, he can open the front part of his legs, but as long as the back part is touching, that's good to go. That the chest should be touching. Why do we do it like that? Because the Pasuk writes about the angels, regel yeshara. The feet of the angels is one foot straight. Okay? And we try to be domel malachim, try to be likened to the angels, and therefore, we stoya, two feet together, molimzim. Tov. Why are we trying to be like angels? Oh. We're not above them. Why are they trying to be like us? We have a separate door. Amen. Tov, I hear your question, Rafi. You say, why are we trying to be domele malach? I'll tell you why. Inside of every person, the Gemara says you have three things that are like an angel and three things that are like chutz mi kivotchem, an animal. Okay? Three things like an angel, three things like an animal. And the question is, which one of these three should you connect more to? Again, we have to connect more to the angelic side, to us, to the holy spiritual side. And therefore, we try to be domele malachim, to be likened to the angels. Again, with the three animalistic parts, we try to elevate. That's what we do when we pray, by the way. The Baalei Musa, the Baalei Hasidut explain prayers instead of a sacrifice. Again, your mouth is like the Mizbeah, the Zhertvinik. Again, and your heart is keneged, the Kodesh Kodeshim. Again, you have to keep your heart clean, pure, and your mouth also appropriate. But when you pray, what you do is, you would bring an animal back in the day on the Mizbeah. That's why we pray today, because there used to be Zhertvinik. Right? Today, when you pray, your Makriv, the, the, the Bahamiyut Shelcha, the animalistic essence of you, you bring it, so to speak, on the divine altar, and you elevate it to God, that you say, my physical material is for you, Hashem. I eat, I sleep, procreate, whatever it is, with connection to God Almighty, and not Chas Shalom with a dis disconnection. So, now, Oh, says the Zohar HaKadosh, very scary. You're not allowed to open your eyes in the middle of Amidah. A person who knows the prayer by heart, you have to keep your eyes closed. You're not allowed to keep your eyes open in Amidah. You know, the two sons of Aharon, they died. Why did they die? What? Many answers. One of the answers... They looked at the Shekhinah when it descended on Har Sinai. They looked at the divine light. You have to look away. You're not allowed to look with your physical eyes at Hashem's holy Shekhinah, at the divine light. Ken Sasur. You're not allowed to do it. And they looked. And because they looked, they passed away. When Moshe Rabbeinu saw the burning bush, he turned away. Right or wrong? Hello? Mm -hmm. Not supposed to look. There was once a story with the Arizal. His student, Rav Chaim Vital, started having eye pain. <coughs> with eye pain. Ari said two things. He said, do, don't do this. And then he said, don't look at me when I pray. Amida. Okay? You're not supposed to look at me. Why? He says, when a person, what? Okay. When a person prays Amida, he says, he draws on himself the divine holy light. He says, when you look at that, it's very damaging to the physical eye. You're not allowed to look. It's not kavod. You have the, the shekhinah resting on a person. It's not kavod to look. Okay? <laughs> That's why the Kwanim, they cover their hands. Okay? When they bless the people, they cover their hands. Why do they cover their hands? You're not supposed to look at their hands. Okay? There's a shekhinah that comes and manifests from them. And therefore, we don't look. It's considered disrespectful. Okay? So the Zohar says that the eyes of a person must remain closed. But what if I need a sidur? And use a sidur, no problem. Either sidur or eyes closed. But to look around. Can I watch people sometimes? They're like this. Hmm. Why are you watching? I'm finished already. I'm finished already. Ken, and they, they're doing something over there. Finger exercises. Kacha. Ken, bore me ore haesh. Ken, be that as it may, says the Zohar, man de pakah enoi bitzlote. A person who opens his eyes in his prayer, makdim ale malach hamavet. Wow! I didn't read this in the morning. Alat zmo. He draws on himself closer to Gan Eden. Ve eno zoche lilon or ashkina. He doesn't see the divine holy light when he dies. Everybody when they die, they see a divine light. A light. 
beautiful. But it's not a light like this. It's a spiritual light. But they say it's such a comforting light. Okay? Such a good light. You can't explain this beauty of this light. That's only for a person who is careful with his eyes. And also when he davens Amida, his eyes were closed. And he's not looking left and right. Tov. One more halakha. We said one minute, one minute, another halakha. Like this. You're not allowed to hold on to anything when you pray. Now most people don't have anything to hold on to. Who does this apply to? A lot of chazan. Chazan's table is very tall. Okay? And when he prays, what does he do? He puts his hands like this. Okay? On the table. Says halakha, you cannot do it. Don't rest your hands on something. If you see me ever holding on to something, don't judge me. Sometimes, as I told you, I feel a little dizzy. Okay? What happens? Sometimes you feel off balance, and I don't want to fall. In the, imagine the middle of Amidah, the rabbi, it's, I hold on a little bit sometimes, yeah, just to make sure, like... Can, maybe. Sometimes when I bow, once I bowed from Odim, can, and I felt like, like I was falling. I was like, what are those, like... You know, and then somebody saw me from the side, like, Makara. Anyway... So if you feel like that, then you can you can hold very lightly onto something to make sure you don't lose balance. But a person who's healthy should never hold on to anything. How do you stand in Amidah? Says Benish Hai, we're going to learn something today. Your right hand, like this. Your left hand, like this. Your thumbs, inside, kacha. Ken? This is how you have to pray, says Benish Hai. Why? Shmo shmo. Ken? You feel humbled in front of God Almighty. Some people, they hold like this. Ken? Billy I used to have a teacher. How you hold the sidur? So that's a question. If you have a sidur, then obviously it's not possible but for you. A re repetition we're allowed to stay, you can stay like this? Ken. <laughs> Ken. If you have sidur, then it's not possible. If you don't have sidur, you should try to pray. Uh, try to pray like this with your thumbs inside. Ken. And you pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. This is like a servant in front of his master. And you hear that son, that we will bring these lessons into practice and to realize that the essence and purpose of prayer is to reconnect to the divine source. Okay? That prayer is a recharge. Imagine you don't have a charger. You don't have a charger. You don't have problems. Prayer is to recharge the neshama. To add to makriv the bahamiyut. It gives you a surcharge that throughout the day, the spirit, the soul, the angelic part of you has kohot, has strength, and overpowers the material. Baruch Amen.